Today on X-Play, we learn that violence is the answer in Chaser. We debate the right to bear light guns in Time Crisis 3. And the solid gold dancers hit rock bottom in Ultimate Beach Soccer. Enough already. It's game time. Please welcome your surly mouseketeers, Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Grr. Yeah, grr. Oh. That's, that's my surly face. That's my smelly chili idol. Hello, welcome to X Play. To, you're nice singing today. Thank you. Today we have RPGs, beach soccer, and some really, really bad camera angles. Oh, goody. Does that mean we have another Resident Evil game for me to complain about? Yeah, no, not no, yet. No, not yet. But soon, I hope. We've also got a light gun game, which means Morgan's probably going to be making those ooh la la noises again. It's so Perhaps. Cute. But I'm not making any promises. But to start things off, we have a review of a first-person shooter made by a Slovakian company. So at least Slovakia is finally represented in the gaming industry. Now only Turkmenistan would come out with a dating sim. It's a bad idea. Here's yeah. a review of Chaser. 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 It's not the story of some recent law school grad chasing slip and falls at Walgreens. It's this guy. Chaser comes at you like a very familiar ex who promises they've changed. Yeah, a lot like that guy. I know you'll be different this time. You'll shower more, you'll get a job, and you'll get a car. And maybe you, how about a release date sometime soon? And you. John Chaser, what have you got to say for yourself? Look at you, you hackneyed, spent piece of used space trash. You're just like all the rest with your recycled tough guy talk dropping out of your mouth like pureed carrots spilling down a baby's bib. It's out. You want to see it? Chaser for the PC drops yet another first person shooter into our lap with the familiar thud of a body hitting the pavement. I've seen visions of dystopic cities and ruins. I've seen evil syndicates, sexy scientists, and crooked cops. And yes, I've seen you too, Chaser, and your painful moral introspection. Stop whining. The killing floors of Chaser are familiar ground. This game is about body count. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're willing to groan through another litany of evil story elements, you'll definitely get to whack something. I need to get to Mars. Apparently, Johnny Boy was a soldier in a past life, and then he was used in, oh no, not that, a military experiment. Are they allowed to do that? I mean, I know they pay for college tuition, but experiments? But one hour and ten minutes after taking the drug, with one man climbing a tree to feed the birds, the troop commander gave up. Well, now there's something in his head called a spider. And... Can you help me with the spider? Oh, forget about it. Don't squeeze the trigger, pull it on this all too familiar storyline. We all had tough paths, pal. Why don't you just go out and get a lawyer like every other whiner in this country? Of course, you'll be given the familiar arsenal of weapons that almost every game character in the world gets at the video game character armory down the road. Adrenaline mode causes our tiny, whiny hero to, yep, another lift from another game, slow motion. Big deal. A new game engine performs decently, but puts you out when it comes to some basic elemental jumping onto inanimate objects. Lots of cliches. Predictable environments and that all too familiar feel of a dozen or so other first person shooters leave John Chase in the sad shallows of the personals. His rating, a two out of five. The Chaser is really similar to Maze Griff and Bounty Hunter. They're both full of overly shiny surfaces and just not much more. No, no, really. No. But, you know, if you're bored, maybe play it. I don't know. Hey, we have an RPG by Black Isle Studios. That's good news. They gave us games like Planescape Torment, excellent. Baldur's Gate, excellent. And, of course, one of my favorite RPGs, Fallout. Now, this RPG, however, is kind of... Semi-historical. Mm -hmm. Don't let that turn you off too much, though it does take place after the Crusades. Does it still have werewolves and spells and demons? Maybe an RPG that does not have spells and demons. Fallout? Yeah, I knew that, but that's why it's 
I like it. Stop looking at me. Anyway, this game takes place in an alternate reality where Richard the Lionheart actually won the Crusades. A victory that turns out to be a terrible idea, much like the Crusades themselves. Here's our review of Lionheart. As a thank you for purchasing Lionheart, Reflective Entertainment included a copy of their breakout clone, Ricochet Extreme. It's pretty fun, but it's not why we're here now, is it? Now that's more like it. In 1192, the Knights of the West waged the Third Crusade against the armies of the East. Order the history lesson. King Richard the Lionhearted defeated his rival, the great Sultan Saladin. Actually, the setting for Lionheart is one of the best we've seen in a long time. Based on an alternate history, Lionheart portrays 16th century Europe as a place filled with monsters, demons, and magic power. And the Inquisition. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! Yes, that Inquisition seeks to root out all those tainted by magic power. Unfortunately for you, you've got a demon living inside of you. Great, just great. Lionheart starts out just great. The role-playing system allows you to completely customize your character and play the game in the manner of your choosing. At least that's how it appears. The first part of the game takes place in and around Barcelona. Here, you'll align yourself with one of several factions, including the all-powerful Inquisition. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! You'll find that there are lots of quests to take on, and unlike so many other RPGs, there are multiple ways to complete them, and different outcomes depending on how you handle the situation. Better yet, many of these quests are intertwined, leaving you to make some hard choices on how you want to proceed. This is all great stuff, until you get to combat. It's hard. Leave this one alone. Very hard. Early on in Lionheart, because there are so many role-playing options, this doesn't pose too much of a problem. But things change drastically during the second half of the game. All the cool role-playing pretty much gets chucked out the window in favor of wave after wave of Diablo-style hack and slash. This wouldn't be a big deal if A, the combat wasn't so unforgivably difficult, and B, the first part of the game wasn't so masterfully designed. The first part of Lionheart is easily a four, but the generic dungeon crawl that makes up the second half is too material, plain and simple. So in the end, we're stuck giving Lionheart a three out of five. If you do decide to play the game, take your advice. When you reach the halfway point, just boot up Ricochet Extreme instead. Great, just great. Did I always expect the Spanish Inquisition? And it never comes. Yeah, it's just, it's just the Slovakian Inquisition. Now I jest. Life is full of unfulfilled promises. Mm. It's true. I'm sorry to break that to you. A good example, Duke Nukem Forever. Coming up. Surrender your badge and your light gun. It's Time Crisis 3. This holiday, Xbox, it's good to play together. The most powerful game system now has the ultimate holiday offer. Get Tetris Worlds and Star Wars, and Clone Wars, two months of Xbox Live and an Xbox for only what? Rated E to T, Xbox, it's good to play together. For 26 straight years, Ford F-Series has been the best-selling truck in America. Ford hopes to continue that tradition with the 2004 F-150, a truck like none you've seen before. Built with the latest technological advancements, including a 5.4-liter three-valve Triton engine, Ford's new F-150 is the most powerful F-150 ever. The 2004 F-150 also has best-in-class low-end torque, best-in-class towing capacity, and best-in-class payload capacity. Built Ford Tough, the F-150 is the only pickup that has crossbars welded through the side rail, which means it has the strongest frame of any pickup in its class. This feature, along with outboard-mounted rear shock absorbers, help the F-150 deliver superior handling, control, and responsiveness you can feel immediately. Plus, the F-150 is the quietest truck in its class. 
It's the only full-sized pickup that's engineered with quiet steel behind the dash. With five different models, the next F-150 lets you ride in comfort and style. All this technology adds up to what the Detroit Free Press calls the best pickup truck ever. For more on the next F-150, go to your nearest Ford dealer or log on to FordVehicles.com. I'm Kristen Spence for Digital Avenue. The most powerful game system now has the ultimate holiday offer. Get Tetris Worlds and Star Wars, Clone Wars, two months of Xbox Live and an Xbox for only what? Rated E to T. Xbox. It's good to play together. Higher. Faster. Stronger. Pushing the limits to be the best. Performance takes you into the labs and onto the training fields. Without technology, in the modern world, athletes are nowhere. Molding the perfect athlete and breaking records. It's more than just how you play. It's how you win. Watch Performance tonight at 9, 8 Central. Only on Tech TV. Once again, the itchy and scratchy of X Play, Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X Play, the show that handles peripherals so you don't have to. Yes, we have a light gun game. Now, as many of you know, light guns have been kind of going the way of the dodo as of late. You do have those semi, semi fond memories of dog cards. You have your original Nintendo system going like that, but now you don't see any gun con games on any consoles anywhere. Well, there was House of the Dead 3 for the Xbox, there was Ninja Saw for the PS2, but I guess that's true for the most part. You sort of look at light guns the way most people look at 8 tracks. There's a nostalgic value, it seems kind of fun. But mainly it's a sort of clunky, weird thing that doesn't do anything with anything that right. exists anymore. Which makes this a magic happy moment. We have a decent <laughs> GunCon game. Here's, here's our review of Time Crisis 3. Oh, light gun. You're like an old friend I haven't seen in years. And now you're back in my arms again. Well, actually in my hot little hand, because I need to shoot some people. Games where you can actually pick up a gun and blast baddies are few and far between. And Time Crisis 3 is just the kind of purebred 3D first-person shooter the light gun was made for. No other gun con compatible product offers this much bang for your buck. Of course, you can use a regular controller, but nothing feels as good as pulling a real trigger. One of the most beautiful countries on the Mediterranean coast. Lucano, a small Mediterranean territory, is in serious trouble. The evil Zagorius Federation has invaded nearby Estigos Island and pointed tactical missiles at the otherwise peaceful nation. Stop right there! Oh my god! Enter the cavalry, super spies Alan and Wesley. Yes, Wesley. You control either of them throughout an adventure spread across three massive stages. Your goal is simple. Take back the occupied landmass by force. Play straightforward. Kill, Kill at will. will. Firefights take place in docks, city streets, and vehicular chase sequences. You're sheltered behind cover, peeking out and dropping the hammer on evil Federation troopers. Take that! Yeah, that's what I thought. Keeping your arsenal well stocked is actually a huge part of the experience. Faced with blade-wielding foes that pop up in your face and enemy battalions that attack en masse, choosing the right weapon for the scenario at hand is imperative. From dazzling urban architecture to crate-filled cargo holds to sandy beaches, the presentation is impeccable. Sound effects dazzle as well. Longevity is the only drawback. As a shoot-em-up, Time Crisis 3 delivers only so much replay value. Once you're done, you're pretty much done. This game has been a long time coming, and, take it from us, this sucker's been worth the wait. X-Play gives Time Crisis 3 a 4 out of 5. Right, the Time Crisis 3 was pretty good, and we thought we'd show you a couple of light guns, since if you want to play it, you'll probably need one. Yeah, see, now, Time Crisis 3, the game Time Crisis 3, that's coming out soon. But Time Crisis, the game, packaged with the gun together, 
That's not going to be out until early next year. Don't look at me why. I just tell you this news. I do not make it up. Okay, now the gun con that you got with Ninja Assault and Vampire Nights or Time Crisis 2 is the gun that you would have to use right now if you want to play your, your Time Crisis right. 3. Now, we decided <laughs> to show you a couple of, the, of these guns here. This is the gun con 2. Right, that's right? by Namco, right? Right, this is by Namco. Now, this is the one that we actually recommend that people use. Right. It's, it actually has a different type of technology that allows you to, it sort of takes a picture of the screen instead of shooting light at the screen. So uh, that, that, that does make it a wee bit more nifty and a little bit more accurate. And it allows you to have a reticle on the screen as opposed to the more traditional Very light cool. gun. This one um, has cool recoil action. See, look at that. It's almost like you're shooting a real gun, except it's glowing green. They did model it after a true armament, uh, the Desert Eagle, From which is yeah, which is the Israeli gun, though this is made in China. So, you know, you, Who knows? you, you tell us. Right. Well, I but like they're, the, they're pretty. I like that they're colorful. They make the instruments of death look just so whimsical. And they can match your outfit if you happen to be wearing this color. Yeah, or crush orange. Coming up, then find religion and pretend to be airplanes in Ultimate Beach Soccer. Imagine zooming to anywhere in a split second. Imagine 40 times mega zoom lightning fast autofocus. Imagine what we can do together. The new Dimage Z1. Another digital breakthrough from Konica Minolta. When the stakes are high, the great ones answer the call. Like a November wind, cut through the unforgiving wasteland of company data and emerged with numbers that were once untouchable. You have the new Microsoft Office system. It's showtime. All right, we're going to try and hit that water bottle with the new upgradable gravity Three, bomb from Ratchet & Clank going commando. One, go! Oh, way off. You missed it. My bad. <laughs> Gravity Bomb, one of 51 weapons and gadgets not fit for this world. Rated T for teen. You look great. This year, the holidays are gateways, so give the box. Inside, you'll find the season's hottest gifts. For a limited time, get a free Gateway 5 megapixel digital camera with the purchase of select PCs, like our M675, which features an Intel Pentium 4 processor with HD technology. Act now and get free shipping with delivery by Christmas. We also have great desktops starting under $500. So hurry in, give the box. Please welcome two stars who do their own game stunts, Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back. We have a sports game that takes place on the beach. And thankfully, it's not volleyball this time. This game, I think, also has its own sand engine. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It's beach soccer. And unlike freestyle street soccer, which features warring, gang, warring gangs playing footy, this is actually a real sport. And it's popular everywhere but the states, because for some reason, the country just doesn't dig soccer. Yeah, we have so many other games. That's probably the reason. Anyway, this is the preview of Ultimate Beach Soccer. This is Beach Soccer. It seems to put a new spin on bullies kicking sand in Wim's faces. It also seems to bring humankind's quest for spiritual freedom within close proximity to man's quest for divine intervention. Hallelujah. Well, with all the soccer games out there, we thought we'd look at one that's actually a legitimate sport. 
each locale visits a fantasy type of enthusiasm. Judging from the attendance, this is a popular sport. And judging from the enthusiasm of the crowd, we can only conclude that this could only happen in a video game. This sport seems to be aiming to involve all of the currently hip elements of MTV society here. There's Mr. DJ, a bevy of pixelated women folk. Ew, Mr. Marketing and Mr. Hip Youth Driven Soundtrack. And let's not forget Mr. Hipper Than Thou hairstyle and sunglasses. Yes, the world does seem to be turning into one big MTV beach house. Did I mention the in your face dissing? The differences in camera mode seem to be a tad shallow in our preview copy, but it's doubtful that this game is out to compete with anything resembling FIFA soccer. This game is an international cavalcade of stars. Beat soccer stars, that is. There's the Swedish team that seems to be named after a new kind of IKEA lighting fixture. Pricka shoots. Pricka scores. Where was I? Beat soccer, right. Special moves are rewarded with artistry points, of course. That's that little spin move I'm doing. Play the world, because the world seems really enamored with this sport. Tournaments and friendly matches allow variation as to how many teams and how many players you'll choose to field, or beach in this case. The arcade setting will allow you a great deal of freedom in terms of some highly entertaining pass moves and very responsive teammates. You'll nickname your goalie the Berlin Wall for the meager amount of shots that get past him. Great stop! If your game ends in a tie, you'll have to finish things off with the dreaded penalty kick. I hate the penalty kick. And then there's this curious condition. It happens when the other side has a substitution and is sort of the hockey equivalent of a power play. Kind of a new religion for the MTV faithless. Whatever it is, the players perform and the ball looks funny. Beat soccer won't be for everyone. Real soccer gamers will stick to their precious copies of FIFA soccer for the blood and turf realism of the world's most popular sport. For those who might want to have a little fun, however, look for Ultimate Beat Soccer in the fall. Yep, the players in this game, will they thank the Lord when they score a point because apparently the Lord hates the other team and just does not want them to win. That would explain the Detroit Tigers. They just aren't down with the G.O.D. And the hate mail from Michigan starts now. And if you'd yeah. like to talk about any of the games we've reviewed or anything else on the show, join us for X-Play Chat. It's every Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, and it's at techtv.com slash xplay. Guess what? We'll be back. Up next, bad camera angles. They aren't just for Resident Evil anymore. Home Tech is brought to you by GMC. We are professional grade. Introducing the first SUV with a power sliding rear roof. Whoa. New GMC Envoy XUV. Professional grade engineering. It's not more than you need, just more than you're used to. Salton's Icebox Flip Screen 03 is an all in one entertainment system that fits under your kitchen shelf. The Icebox lets you listen to music and watch TV or DVDs, and its broadband connection lets you check email. The Salton Icebox's flip down 12.1 inch touchscreen tucks neatly away when not in use. It's great for the high tech kitchen, but watch out at $2,300 plus installation, it's expensive. Steve. Really boosting our e-business numbers with Dell. Power Edge servers, Intel Xeon processors. Right, right. It's an SAP Oracle 9 Iraq database solution. Yep. Porting better resolution from Unix to Linux. TCO is down, ROI is up. Ensuring near-term liquidity and profitable share gain. Great. Give your enterprise applications the flexibility of Dell Business Solutions. Call or go online today. I can't believe I owe this much money. How did it get this bad? Two jobs, and I'm only paying the minimum? I'm just not getting ahead. 
Now I'm even scared to answer the phone in our own home. Disconnect notice? Could things get any worse? Where's the light at the end of my tunnel? Community Credit Counseling Corporation understands, and we can help you solve your problems. One simple phone call to us can help take the creditors off your back and let you begin the rest of your life. We're an accredited nonprofit agency. We'll help reduce your repayment time by up to 75% and lower those high interest rates to as little as 0%. Finally, I'm on the road to reestablishing my credit and my life. Whether you owe thousands or hundreds of thousands in credit card debt, call the toll-free number on your screen for more information. Call now. Get your life back. The elves are back. Pringle, Pringle, show us what you got. And you can bowl them right down Santa Claus Lane. Tech TV presents Super Elf Bowling. Download the game now and go for the perfect score. Super Elf Bowling. It's all new and available only at techtv.com and instorm.com. Please welcome the Alpha and the Omega, Sessler and Webb. Welcome back to x -Play, where no matter how you shoot me, we have bad camera angles. Yes, we've played games with horrible, horrible camera angles where you can't tell where you're going or who's shooting you. Insane. Tomb Raider, Resident Evil, Batman Dark Tomorrow. Whoa, that's a good one. You know why it's a Dark Tomorrow in that game? Because you can't see where the hell you're going in it. Right, and there's also Steak, of course, but then everything about that game is bad. It has a blue kickball of death. What does that mean? Still, Resident Evil is the most consistent bad camera offender. It is, and recently when I was going to work, something happened, something strange. I entered a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space, as timeless as infinity. It's an area which we call the bad camera zone. Submitted for your approval, Adam Sessler, host of Tech TV's X-Play, arrives at work to find the entire office is now. Hey, Blair, I think we need to be changing the... Pre-rendered. Frustrated with his inability to interact with the environment, Adam forgets the first rule of bad camera work. All threats are off screen. Little does Adam know that when the camera changes, all bets are off. fudge is pre-rendered and unobtainable. This then is the last straw for Mr. Sessler. The sad thing is Adam also walks like that when he's drinking. Yes, at least when I'm drunk, the fudge is for real and I can eat it and get all over my face and look dumb. Yeah. With, which goes well with my walking. Right. I'm sure it's beautiful. Oh my gosh, do you feel that? Do you feel it? What? It's a total change of subject. Oh my God, you're I right. Know. Oh, Here's some God. viewer mail. Today's question is from Sergio. He writes, I was wondering if you could answer me a question. Do you guys know what happened to the SNK Neo Geo company? Are they making more games like The King of Fighters, Metal Slug, Samurai Showdown, etc.? Can you put this email on TV, please? That was really, really well articulated. Thank you, that's exactly what he wrote. Which goes to tell you, Sergio, you don't need it. Give us the crazy punctuation. Yes, we'll answer your question on TV. Now, many of you remember the Neo Geo Arcade system, which featured a lot of great SNK 2D games, like the one Sergio mentioned in his email. Yes, all those. Now, back in 2001, SNK pulled out of the US, 
because their Japanese parent company told them to. <laughs> now, there have been some legal wrangling with big words that are Latin and whatever, and SNK is coming back to the U.S. Yay! Welcome back. They've announced plans to get King of Fighters 2000 and 2001 re-released on the PS2. Now, on top of that, there will be Metal Slug games for the Game Boy Advance and the PS2. So, expect a lot of games coming from them in the future, and to find out more about that and other stuff, you come to our website. TechTV.com. You know what that means. Good night. Look, it's like Jung Woo. Come on. Jung Woo. Welcome.